Okay, so I really wanted to do this um, extra little bit today because I felt like it was a part of the root chakra information that kind of missed out. You know, we went through a lot, talked about a lot last class two days ago. So, um, and it's once again inspired by Kara. What happened was I received my illumination communication book in the mail and I haven't even started reading it yet, but I started processing all of the still residue feelings of, you know, having my needs unmet um, in my, in the root chakra, you know, when, when we're infants and we're completely reliant on our parents. Um, and I feel like, people are really feeling that way because you know that's like the root of lack and the fear of death is that there is not enough there's not enough life force and so that the needs of our life to sustain our life are not going to be met um and uh, my mother-in-law sent us a message was like hey you know how are you decorating the nursery and I was like, I, I don't think I'm going to have my newborn baby in her own room. It didn't really make any intuitive sense to me. But and then I started looking up on the Internet and there's so many people that really believe that, you know, if you put your baby in a crib and they're crying, like you just leave them. 
and let them cry it out and eventually they'll stop. And leading into them wearing dirty soiled diapers for many years and just, you know, being soiled in your poop. And I know that I experienced that. So many people on earth experience that. Beyond that, there's a lot of poverty and, you know, especially right now with this crazy pandemic thing where people are really worried there's not enough toilet paper. Toilet paper, right? Like such a root thing that we need that we are not having enough of. <laughs> so a lot of this energy was experienced when this week you know, I feel really pregnant. It's hard kind of to move around right now. And I'm trying to catch up on all these sessions. And I'm finding it kind of hard to ask for help to say like, hey, can you, can somebody else make dinner? Can somebody else, you know, bring me a tea? And usually I don't have to ask because I feel like these needs get met. Um, but I feel like because there's an upsurge of needs that I now have, um, all of a sudden there's all of these fears coming up in the root that make me feel like these needs are not going to be met and that somehow that would mean that I would die or something. So I felt like it would be cool to do a session specifically focused on this because I know that our human collective, our humanity is also processing these feelings and I'm sure a lot of us also um, you know, just these feelings like, oh, I don't want to take up too much room. Like you have to apologize when you communicate something about yourself because you're taking up, you know, somebody's energy or something just because you need to be heard or you need to be witnessed or you need to be held. All of these are needs that maybe subconsciously is really hard for us to ask for because we learned from a very, very, very young, like infant stage that you know our needs are not going to be met and maybe when we do ask for what we need we're going to be met with hostility or even violence or um just being ignored so very deep and super super inner child work we're going into our infancy and all the feelings that we might have felt before we were even verbal about how safe the world feels, how safe the reality feels, how we are receiving and really having our needs met. And I could feel that fear coming up in the root chakra. So this is what we're addressing today. I think somebody's connected to the Bluetooth speaker and they started playing something in a different room. So yeah. Um, and so in that also, of course, is the reconnecting to the organic grid. This is very much about the false matrix and how it's made us believe that we have to rely on it for all of our needs like you know amazon and groceries and fuel and job all of these things that sustain our life force but actually those aren't really the things that are sustaining our life what is sustaining our life is the air that we're breathing and is you know gravity keeping us on the ground and all these plants and sunlight that's nourishing the plants that is nourishing our bodies um, and so there's a lot of poverty and lack programming in the false matrix because it, that's how it controls the people is to make them feel like there's no other way to survive besides relying on the false matrix, relying on the false system. And that makes people kind of live in the state of, of fear as our parents may have, as our neighbors might. Um, and so we're really addressing that and reconnecting into the organic grid today, which I think is something that we're doing, you know, together for the planet and for the collective. 
That was one of my concerns about these mass meditations today is that they were beginning to feel a little bit ungrounded. And when things get ungrounded because people haven't gone through their inner healing is that if most people in the meditation group are very ungrounded, that energy can very easily be hijacked and taken and used for something else. And so people say, oh, you know, if everybody just came with the good intentions, then it's going to be fine. But, um, you know, there are ways to uh, respect and be aware in those spaces. And I can already feel there are certain, like, astral beings moving in to take advantage of this situation. So we're going to do some code work for our network so that we can send out this really rooted energy we need to be connected to the organic matrix otherwise we'll just be continuing to create the false matrix right um and you guys know all of this so we're just going to do this work together we're going to move through these fears and lacks in our root chakra talking about um having our needs met and remembering who is meeting our needs it's not the false matrix is actually nature and life itself. There's, there doesn't have to be a middleman, right? And in some way, we're kind of getting rid of the middleman, and that's why it's kind of scary for the middleman because he's like, oh crap, you know, I've kind of been taking advantage of all these people. Okay, so. Yeah, just breathe, get into a comfortable position. Probably sitting is the best today because we're really wanting to create a strong vertical staff from our cosmic chakras all the way into our earth star chakra, all the way into the center of the earth, really connecting into the highest timeline for all living creatures. Really feeling into the heart and feeling that breeze through the leaves and the flowers. Maybe smell the scent of flowers and the ocean. There's that frequency of life, of consciousness, of Gaia. Sensing into the truth that and she's supporting so much life. There is no lack. That when we live in alignment and in simplicity and take only that which we need, and we're tending to her as we are exchanging with her, with our love, that there is no fear, there's no lack. All of our needs can be met. Making a connection down from our heart to the root chakra and back up to the throat chakra. As we're feeling deserving of everything that we need, We're deserving and worthy of everything that we need that sustains our life, that sustains our wellness, and gaining this strength and stability to communicate those things. Tuning and expanding out into the collective grid. Sending this energy of comfort and security into any node of consciousness on this planet that might be needing it.
sending a code or a reminder to humanity, the true source of our life force energy. And that as the false matrix is crumbling, there's nothing to fear. The false matrix is not the source of life. And as we actually rid of the middleman, we are getting closer to the source.
to the root chakra, see it as the dirt. See that there is a mound or a pile of dirt here on the bottom of our body. We're going to check in with the youngest version of our cell phone just became a seedling. So that could be the moment of conception or the months and years following conception. And we will see ourselves as a seedling. Growing out of this mound of dirt in our root chakra, What does it look like? What is the condition of the soil? Is the air around the ceiling clear? Or are there different Creatures like bacteria and mold in the air around the ceiling. Is there plenty of sunlight? Or does the space look a little bit dim? Just become aware of the youngest, most precious part of ourself. See ourself as a seedling in the root chakra. So as the dirt and the soil represents our stability, represents the comfort and safety that 
we feel in our environment. What is the state of the dirt? Is it moist and dark and deep and rich? As the air around this plant represents the energetic and emotional terrain around us, is it feeling clear and lively and joyful and conducive for growth? Or does it feel like there are mold and pathogens, harsh emotions, unprocessed pain around us. And as the light, the level of sunlight represents our connection to our soul, and the living matrix, our spirit, our God, did this part of ourself feel still connected? Did we feel afraid that we've fallen away from that deep, safe connection? As we become aware of the state of our deep inner seedling, we're going to begin to replenish the environment that we are in. So perhaps the soil needs water. Perhaps it darkens with nourishment and fertility. Perhaps any hostility and stuck emotions in the air around the seedlings begins to heal and restore and clear. Almost as if we're recreating those moments, those very important moments of our own growth and gestation. going back in time as our own guardian angel. To create the optimal environment for our little seedling to feel nourished and supported, for it to feel that we have everything we need and more.
Riley, I got a heckler. <laughs> oh, breathing through the root chakra, bringing space, checking in with the state of our seedling. Maybe she was a little bit wrinkled and dried up before, and now she's looking like she's alive. She's looking happy. OK. 
connecting into the frequency of Gaia, restructuring our connection to the reality, restructuring the reality which we are rooted into, retracting any roots that we might have put down in the false matrix that is not truly nourishing us, that is actually taking our life force energy, pretending to be a source of life, retracting all of the little limbs of our root system from the artificial reality and planting them into the earth, into the organic matrix of life. And feel those tendrils of our roots move down into the dirt of the earth, sensing the minerals and the rocks and the critters and the insects and the water that our little root feelers might be learning and re connecting to this deep, brilliant sense of aliveness. And continue to retract any tendrils of our root system that might be clinging out of fear onto the false matrix, onto this artificial reality that has been lying about nourishing and providing life for you. <laughs> Letting go of any sense of victimization that we might feel from having been tricked understanding that we can very simply retract those tendrils of our roots and connect them deep into the ground, into the organic Gaia system of life. Witness this new window of opportunity opening up where there is infinite possibility for creativity. One more time while we're tracking any parts of our root system that might still be tangled up in the false reality in the artificial matrix. Untangling and pulling them back as we nourish and push them down into the earth. We can see that these roots are growing wider and stronger as they are becoming nourished by you know, true food, the minerals, the water, the prana, the resonance. Oh, feel how those roots are able to actually grow strong instead of just be thimble, little frail pieces of the root system. And as those true roots are growing wide, we're feeling supported and stable. <sighs> to recognize that there is so much power and stability in your own sovereign connection to your source of life, the planet, the elements. Not truly your job. And this is how we 
delete the, all, the false matrix altogether because we're no longer tricked into believing that we need it. And it cannot exist without our energy. Breathe down. Check in with our seedling. See how our seedling is doing. She's getting plenty of sunshine. And the sun, the sunlight is just cleaning out any bacteria or mold that is flying around. Oh. So as you go on to do these mass meditations today, <clears throat> or even if you're not participating and you just have some moments of quiet, send these codes into the collective. Remind everybody that the true mission that we're doing is really anchoring ourselves into the organic matrix, that without doing this, we are continually giving our energy to the false reality, no matter what our intention is because this reality is based on energy and without awareness of our energy and consciousness and where our energy is flowing um, we can't understand what we're creating and so we're really pulling in this simple and deep level of awareness and lucidity to recognize that what's happening right now is that we as a planet is purging a parasitic artificial force which is pretending to be the source of life and as we have just anchored into the organic matrix bypassing the artificial reality altogether we are actually just pushing that reality out so grow these roots and help humanity grow our roots back into the earth, back into the organic living matrix. 
and we will have our planet back in no time. <sighs> so short and sweet coding today. Let me know how you're feeling. Yeah, keep doing this meditation. For those of you who feel like you have been in the false matrix for a long time, it might take a while to grab all of your roots back. So take your time and nourish yourself and just be aware of where you're at. All right. I love you all. Have a beautiful day.